Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be checking out the latest release of Parrot OS 4.11. We'll be using the default desktop environment Mate. Parrot OS is based off of Debian and has two main versions, the desktop and the security version, and is a great alternative to Kali Linux and offers a large selection of cybersecurity tools. There are three desktop environments available to Parrot, Mate, KDE, and just recently introduced they started supporting XFCE. In the top left-hand corner, we have applications, and this is just a quick launch of various different categories that we can go through, which are available here in Parrot, so you can launch here from the top left. Let's go through some of these. First, we have privacy, so in order to remain private on the internet, there's various different tools you can use under the privacy section. Office offers you the Libra Office Suite by default, under internet, we have access to various different web browsers, including Tor and Firefox. Graphics gives us access to GIMP and the LibreOffice Draw tool. Sound, we have Brazero, Cheese, VLC Media Player. Games, Xboard is really the only thing installed here, a chess game. Pen testing is where it gets really interesting because we have all sorts of pen testing, ethical hacking, and vulnerability testing tools. The most used tools are up at the top and it gives you access to some of the most used tools across the cybersecurity world. So Air Crack NG, a tool that can help you crack WPA and WPA2 PSK keys. Armageddon, an audit wireless network toolkit. Armitage, a Java GUI for Metasploit framework. Bettercap, networks, reconnaissance. Burp Suite, Web Application Proxy Framework, CertGraph, Enumerate DNS Names by Checking SSL Certificates, EDB Debugger, a cross-platform debugger, GoBuster, a directory file and DNS busting tool, Johnny, a hash cracker that detects hash types automatically, Multigo, Mining and Gathering Information, OPH Crack, Windows Password Cracker, OWASP, Zap, find vulnerabilities in web applications, Weavely, a web shell, and Wireshark to analyze network traffic. These are the most commonly used tools on Parrot OS. You'll want to make sure to check some of these out. They come standard with the security version. Of course, you don't need to download the security version. The security version, you can still install these tools with the normal home edition as well. Going on, we have information gathering. We're not going to go through all of the various different applications. We've already looked at the most used ones, but the subcategories we will. There's vulnerability analysis, web application analysis, exploitation tools, maintaining access, post-exploitation, password attacks, wireless testing, sniffing and spoofing, digital forensics, automotive, reverse engineering, and reporting tools. Moving on to the programming subcategory, there's Genie, which is one of my favorite lightweight IDEs. You also have VS Codium, which is an open source project and is also a great IDE to use. System Tools gives you access to various different things that tell you information about the system or let you engage with the system. System Services, these are various different servers that are already pre-installed on your Parrot OS 4.11 security version and allows you to stop, start, or restart services as necessary, accessories, and universal access at the end. Then to the right of that, we have places, which is just a quick launch for some of the home users' default locations. So their desktop documents, music, pictures, videos, downloads for whatever current user you're logged into. You also have the ability to browse the local and remote disks, mount any CD that's currently in your CD-ROM, look at network locations, connect to a specific server or shared disk, or use the Mate search tool. If you use the Mate search tool, you can look at any of the subsections of the file system and try finding a name. System allows you to control some of the system settings and preferences, including customizing the look and feel or personal information here on Parrot OS. Administration, quick access to just a few tools that help administer the computer, 
Control panel is to get you to the Mate settings. You can read about Mate in the desktop environment. Log out, lock, or shut down the computer from system. And then to the right of that, we have the default web browser, Firefox, just a quick launch, terminal quick launch, and Pluma, a text editor, also quick launch. Let's just check out about Mate. This is currently version 1.24.1, only a minor update since the last Mate version. To the right of that, you have some system usage information. It tells you how much of the processor is being used, current memory used by programs and cache, and finally, network bandwidth information. If you click on any of them, so for example here, it will launch the system monitor, gives you a little bit of information here on what version of Parrot you're using, including the kernel, memory, disk space, and then you can access processes, resources, and file systems from here as well. On the right hand side, we have volume control as well as your wired or wireless connections. You can also add a VPN, disconnect from the current connection. And further right, we have the current time or date, including a calendar if you click on it. Something to mention is that if you're using AnonSurf, it can cause your package manager to quit working because it considers some of the IPs used with AnonSurf as forbidden IPs. So if something goes wrong while you're trying to install packages or make package updates and you see the word forbidden, go and try closing the Anon Surf daemon and see if things start working better for you. With that noted, let's check out more of the desktop environment. Here on the desktop, you can move icons around however you want. We have the file system icon, the home users icon, a readme license file and the trash bin. If we check out the about here, we can see Kaya is the file browser 1.24 from Mate. If we close out of the file manager, we'll check out what's on the right hand side of the screen at the very bottom. These are different workspaces you can select between. So if you had, let's say something opened up here in the first workspace, you can go to the next one. You can also drag and drop between workspaces. Most people don't know about this, but if you select the little tiny icon inside the workspace, you can drag and drop. So we're currently on the second workspace, third, fourth, and back to the first, which contains the file browser I have open. It's a little hard to see, so make sure to go down there if you need another virtual workspace to use. Now let's talk about the install image for the security version. It's quite big at around four gigabytes, but it includes a vast amount of security tools, which we've already looked at, which again, help you test for vulnerabilities and help you do a little bit of ethical hacking. Parrot OS uses system D for their init manager. And there's currently a bug in the KD desktop version. If you right click anywhere on the desktop environment, you'll be able to get a quick menu that allows you to create folders, create launchers, documents, open a terminal, organize desktop by name, keep things aligned and change the desktop background. There are quite a few desktop wallpapers available. Check them out. Some of them are pretty cool, especially towards the end. But what I'm interested in is the theme. If you're getting tired of your current desktop, you can check out the themes and change it out so things look quite different by selecting a new theme. There's also a way to get more themes online if you don't like any of the ones that are presented to you. It's definitely something to check out and mess around with. Now let's check out what's available in our start menu at the bottom left hand corner. We can search for anything we like at the top. Let's say we're looking for display settings. We can type in display and we get everything that pertains to displays. The search is quite quick and works well. At the bottom, we have the shutdown button locking the screen and logging out of the current session. Going from bottom up, we have the control center, which lets us further configure the Mate desktop and its settings. Continuing on, we have subcategories like universal access, system tools, which gives us access to Gparted, a partitioning tool, HTOP, so we can view processes in the terminal, Mate terminal, and various other terminals. System services is now added in, which allows you to start and stop various different daemons or servers on the installed on the system. Sound and video, we've already looked at. Programming, also we've looked at, just gives you access to various different IDEs installed by default. 
Privacy allows you to start or stop and on surf. As we've discussed before, it allows you to anonymously surf the web. Preferences changes up various settings with the desktop environment or system. Pen testing is a extensive list of penetration testing tools available to you. As you can see, there are a ton. We won't go through any of these. We'll continue on to Office. Office gives you the LibreOffice suite. Internet gives you access to the default web browsers that are available on the system. Graphics, again, GIMP and the LibreOffice tool. Games, Xboard, administration allows you to administer the system. Accessories, which are just useful tools. All is one of my favorites because that gives you every single program, package, application available on the system. And then if you have a favorite, you can pin it to the desktop or pin it to the favorites menu, which then if you click on favorites, you'll find it in here. For example, let's just pin the about me application and now it's available in favorites. Make sure to use this one. And of course, if you're trying to find something really quick, use that search bar. It'll get you to where you need to go, like Anon Surf. If you're wanting to install a system package, I suggest using the Synaptic Package Manager. If you launch that, it'll ask you for a root password. Type in the root password, authenticate it, and then you can have access to various different packages available. This is quite an extensive packaging tool and it allows you to go through various different mirrors, repositories, and categories to install whatever package you find necessary for your system. The minimum system requirements here for Parrot 4.11 is a dual core x86 instruction set 64-bit processor with at least two gigs of DDR2 RAM and a minimum of 20 gigabytes of hard disk space. I highly suggest going over 32 gigs. I've had issues in the past installing Parrot OS without having 32 gigs at least available. Let's check out the resource usage. I'm going to launch HTOP since it comes standard with the system. And let's check out what's currently being used as far as the resources go. Now this is a virtual machine, so it's got a little bit of extra overhead. So we can see the CPUs fluctuating between 0 and 1.4%. The memory usage is 731 megabytes out of 7.76 gigabytes. This is actually very reasonable for the amount of desktop that you get here. And it's been running for about 27 minutes at this point. Tasks are 71, 143 threads, and no swap is currently being used. So let's look at things after a fresh restart. I just restarted things. The processor is right around 0% to 0.7%. Memory usage now is 630 megabytes out of the eight gigs I have available. Swap is zero, 69 tasks, 138 threads. Dub time is only a minute. So now you know what it looks like to have Parrot OS and what the resource usage looks like right after a reboot. This is fairly minimal for a desktop environment. GNOME runs around 830 megabytes, for example. Moving on. Let's talk about the system information or details. Using NeoFetch, we have Parrot OS 5.0. Really, this is the 4.11 image. I'm emulating this on kernel 5.14, specifically designed for Parrot, the AMD64 version. We've been up for two minutes with 3,378 source packages installed. Bash is running 5.1. The desktop environment is Mate 1.24 with the theme Arc Dark currently. We're using the Mate terminal as the default terminal. And this is being emulated on a Ryzen 7 3700X with currently 675 megabytes out of eight gigs being used. All right, now that we have some of that system information, I think we've gone through pretty much all of the desktop here and explored Parrot for those users who haven't used it quite yet. And that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.